Hi, I'm Brandon Grazley. I'm a high school math teacher, and uh, we've been looking at the sine function and uh, learning how to use it to find the value of an angle when the angle is in one of the four quadrants. Um, and so it, it can be a little bit confusing uh, to know what to do with the values that you get from your calculator. So here are some uh, sine values, some values for the sine function, which when you put into the inverse function in your calculator, you gotta learn or figure out what to do with them. So here I have a forgotten superhero of mathematics, the TI-32 Solar, and I'm gonna put in these values. So let's say I've calculated these uh, while solving a problem, and I hit the second and then the sine function, that is the sine inverse function, and this is about, uh, tells me about 20 degrees. Well, if that value is in the first quadrant, if I know that my angle is between 0 and 90 degrees, then my angle is 20 degrees. But if it is, if I know that it is in the second quadrant, it's an obtuse angle, then what you do is you take 180 and you subtract that value, that 20 degree value, and so you're going to get 160 degrees. That would be the value in the second quadrant. Uh, if it, it can't be in the third or fourth quadrant because the sine uh, function will give us a negative number like these two down here. So these ones are going to be in the first two quadrants and these two are going to be in the second, uh, the third and fourth quadrants. So let's try the second one. Grab again the uh, superhero of mathematics here. 0 0.9925 sine inverse tells me that this must be an about an 83 degree angle. Well that's true if it's in the first quadrant. Just use the number as is. But if it's in the second quadrant I have to take 180 degrees and subtract the 83, which will leave me with 97 degrees. So it just kind of goes from one side of the y-axis over to the other. And these are symmetrical. If you draw these uh, angles onto a graph, you'll see that they all line up. And once again, you can't have anything over here. It can't be in the third or fourth quadrants. Let's try this one here. 0.2079. And then I'm going to hit this plus minus button to make that a negative number. And then I will hit my sine inverse. Ooh, looks like negative 12. Negative 12, what does that mean? Well, it means that I'm uh, just a little bit below. Let me just grab an example here. I've got one nearby. I'm a little bit below the axis here. So this would be like a negative uh, 12 degrees. Or... Uh, if it, so if I'm in, in the fourth quadrant, I'll, I'll just take 360 and add it on to this value. So plus 360, and that gives me 348 degrees. So if I'm here, that's 360 plus uh, the value that I got there, which was, what, negative 12? Or that's the same as 360 minus 12, which is uh, 348 degrees. Or I could be sort of on the opposite side. And then what I'll do, oh, I cleared my calculator. Hang on a second. If I'm on the other side, I can take 180 minus this value. 180 minus a negative value is the same as 180 plus the positive version, or plus 12. So I'm just going to flip that and add 180. That's 100 and, about 192. So let me just write that down again. 180 degrees minus negative 12 degrees is about 192 degrees. And it, once again, this is 12 uh, degrees below the x-axis on one side, and this is 12 degrees below the x-axis on the other side. And let's do the last one here. 0.6157 negative sine inverse negative 38 degrees. Well, that's 38 degrees below the 360 mark, so that's about 322. So 360 plus negative 38 degrees, 322 degrees, about. Or if it's in the, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't line this up very well. There's nothing here, nothing here. This is supposed to be in the third quadrant here, 180. So in the third quadrant again for this one then, uh, instead of, 38 degrees uh, on the one side, I'm going to have 180 plus 38 degrees on the other side, or 180 minus negative 38 degrees, which is 218 degrees. Sorry, that got a little messy. So these are in the third and fourth quadrants, not in the first and second quadrants. 
because I have a negative sine value. That can't happen. Okay, so let's summarize this up. If you have a value in the first quadrant, you know you have an angle that's between sort of 0 and 90 degrees. Then you don't have to do anything. Your sine inverse function will give you theta. That's the nicest one, and that's what we experience whenever we have a right triangle. If you're in the second quadrant, that is your sort of more than 90 uh, up to 180, less than 180, then you take 180 and you take away or you subtract the value that your calculator gives you from the sine inverse uh, function, and that'll give you the angle that you're looking for. If you're in the third quadrant, that is you're more than 180 but less than uh, 270, that's the bottom left corner, then you take 180 and subtract uh, again. So these, you're doing the same thing in this case, but in this case here, the sine function, the sine inverse function um, is giving you a negative value, a negative angle. And so you're going to end up with something more than 180. It'll be in this range and something like 200 degrees. That'll give you theta. And the last chunk, if you're in the fourth quadrant from 270 up to 360 degrees, you take 360 and you add on that negative value that you get from your sine inverse function, and that'll give you your angle theta. Now this is only for values between 0 and 360 degrees. If you go beyond that value, you need to know more about it in the context of the problem that you're trying to solve. But almost all the time you're going to be using values that are in this range from 0 to 360 degrees. So hopefully that gives you the strategy. Uh, but th rather than just memorizing sort of a list of rules here, think about the graph, think about where the angle is, and what kind of value you need to get. And so if you get an answer of uh, you know something like negative 30, and you know that your angle should be over here, you can figure out pretty quickly that you want to have an angle of 210 degrees. So use a picture, visualize it, draw it, and write it down. Uh, learning the rules is okay, but this is your most reliable way using your own brain. Thanks a lot.